Uh, we just got in a bunch of uh, famous, not a bunch, actually, a, a real collection of famous monsters of Filmland, one of the iconic uh, pop culture magazines of the, of the last 50 years. Uh, the, it was founded by Jim Warren, a person who has taken fairly little satisfaction in having created this kind of epic uh, cultural event because he really wanted to be, he wanted to be Hugh Hefner. And his first magazines were men's magazines, and Playboy took off, and his magazines did not. And Famous Monsters was kind of a, well, at least I can publish something sort of effort that turned into a uh, undertaking that uh, you know the early subscribers included Steve Spielberg, uh, George Lucas, you know, pretty much everybody you can think of in, in the movie world, and. Uh, in the end, uh, Jim Warren did not take incredible amounts of satisfaction from this, but these are, this is a very nice collection. You don't see this very often, so we're going to see what, uh, what kind of grades we've got here. All right, this is a Famous Monsters 1. As you can see, kind of, uh, kind of ragged from uh, our uh, reading off about uh, Spider-Man number 1. You can tell this is kind of a low-grade book. Uh, a lot of people would call this a G. Just a shade too ragged to be a G as far as we're concerned, so it's it's a fair to G, but still a solid copy. Uh, those early early Warrens kind of suffered coming off the printing press. The paper was so lousy, it got bruised all over the place and flaked a lot. So this this is doing pretty well for you know for for an early famous monsters. Anyway, so taking it from there, we have the exact opposite of Famous Monsters 2 in unbelievably good condition. I mean, the, this may be one of the best copies we'll ever see. Uh, the, and it is British, as you can tell by the, uh, by the price. Now, these were printed at the same time as the uh, American editions. Uh, it wouldn't have been worth reprinting them later for the print run that Britain would command. Uh, but uh, I have never seen a British edition before. But if you look at it, you can see it's solid all around. Warren's sp spines on the early Famous Monsters are usually an atrocity, as we will see. But th this is pretty clean. This is pretty nice. This is a very, very pricey and very scarce book. Now, one of the things they say about uh, in uh, describing conditions... Uh, one, one of the uh, sort of aphorisms about uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is that all happy families are alike, but unhappy families are all unhappy in their own way. Well, all VF and M and VF books are pretty much alike, but all FAIR and G and G plus books truly are G and VG, uh, FAIR and G and G plus books in their own way. The flaws are, you know, the diversity of flaws that are allowed are pretty wide, so therefore, you know, not every G book looks the same. They all have an accumulation of very different flaws. So this is uh, number three. Uh, it's in somewhat better condition than the number one. Uh, the spine, as you can see, is really ragged, uh, but in this case, it's still there. Uh, so this, we're grading this a G. That is, I'm being a little generous, but it is a solid copy. Number four, this is a scarce, four and five are the, the real scarce, uh, two, of the, two of the three scarcest Warren books along with Erie 17. Uh, this is a remarkably nice looking copy until you look at the spine. Um, and the spine, uh, the miracle is that the staples are still attached. Uh, the spine again, there's spine splits here, there and everywhere. We're calling it a good with heavy spine wear, and uh, then we leave it to the uh, collector to decide just how offended they are by uh, by some of these flaws. Uh, okay, now the number five, which is another one of the very, very scarce issues. Uh, and the covers on these things are pretty nice. This is, uh, uh, you know, they're big, they're loud, and... Uh, well, gruesome when they need to be. Let's see, we, here we have a number five. Again, a very solid copy. Clearly not to be confused with a VF or VF and M. I mean, there's clear signs of wear in most places. But it's, it's solid. The spine is solid, which 
again on these early famous monsters is sort of unusual. So uh, not glossy enough or bright enough or charming enough to be a fine, but you know we're calling it a VG to fine. Uh, now we have King Kong. Uh, and here again we have uh, one of those uh, unhappy grades. They're all grades, low grades are different. First of all, we have a completely split spot, split cover here. Uh, and that, you know, it's kind of depressing. Uh, it's, it's a good book. It's fairly scarce. Uh, but uh, it's a poor. You know, there's really nothing you can do, you know, to, to grade this up. The, um, I would actually, you know, kind of call it a fair with a split cover to actually make it precise what the flaw actually is. Once you say it has a split cover, the rest of the book, you know, is kind of G-ish. Uh, split cover is just a, you know, is a, is a, uh, is a major flaw. Here we have another presumably similar book, also uh, poor with a split cover. And this, the deal would be the same. This this cover is a little more beaten up than the uh, number six, uh, but you know, and has tape to salvage the spine. But this is, you know, it's there. It's all there. It's a nice copy, sort of, and is miserable in its own way. Now this this is uh, this is more like in this is basically a, uh, looks like a looks like a v, solid VG except split cover. There's the same the famous Warren spines of the time. Uh, I you know I would basically call and actually you can if you look at it closely you'll see there's a subscription crease. Uh, that means this was originally shipped you know folded. And that th there is a trace subscription crease as well. Uh, so we're calling this poor, but you know it's kind of a VG with a split cover. Then we have Ah Vincent Price making his first appearance uh, on the cover of Famous Monsters. Uh, this is the ho Halloween special issue. Um, Okay, we're going to have regrade this one because, at first glance, I thought this was very, very, a very nice. I mean, this is an exceptionally nice copy. You hardly ever see this book in this condition. But uh, so I, I, at first sight, graded a VF minus just because it was so pretty in so many ways. However, what I missed was the some creasing here at the bottom of the. Uh, front front of the spine. It's, incidentally, it is uh, Basil Gogos who uh, painted this cover. is like one of the um, sort of a one-man bullpen for Jim Warren. He did tons of covers for Famous Monsters. Uh, so we're downgrading this to a, a solid fine because of the creasing here at the bottom. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's a white cover. The cover is still white. White covers are usually lethal for attracting stains and grime and other things, but this this seems just this is very pretty. I I haven't seen a copy this good in in a decade. Okay, then we have uh, Famous Monsters number ten coming up, which actually many people will uh, recognize as having was reused later on on a later issue. Uh, this is. You know, a clean copy. Uh, with the unfortunate flaking over here, which kind of takes it down from a fine to a VG. Uh, good back cover, solid spine, unlike you know, the, the many spines we've seen that are uh, kind of trashed. So, yep, yeah, that's... Hope to make it a fine, but just couldn't do it. Uh, so that's a VG. And... Gorgo? Gorgo makes his first appearance on... Uh, uh, this is really famous monsters. Here we have uh, Gorgo on number 11, Werewolf on number 12, 
all Basil Gogo's paintings. A very, very nice copy of uh, number 13 with Frankenstein. And another Vincent Price uh, from Pit and Pen the Pendulum. Anyway, we've got a ton of these, so we're going to get to grading them and uh, uh, listing them. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. These are these are genuinely nice books that you don't see that that often.